I would like to thank the organizers for their willingness to do this meeting year after year. Um, I would like also to use this opportunity um, to dedicate my talk to the memory of Professor Joseph Sperling, who was a member of the splicing machine of the splicing community for more than 30 years, and uh, he was my mentor during my graduate studies, and he recently passed away. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about two different topics. The first one is the link between chromatin organization and epigenetic markers, especially DNA methylation, to alternative splicing. And if Juan is going to permit me at the end, I'm going to tell you a short story with a great hope. Okay, so why chromatin organization supposed to be important for regulating alternative splicing? because we have recently demonstrated that during our own unique evolution, exons are under selection to be extremely short, in the same length as DNA that is wrapped around one nucleosome, which is 147 nucleotides. On the other hand, introns lengthening during our evolution to thousands of nucleotides. And the major question is how the splicing machinery managed to pinpoint the location of the short exon, which is located between two very long flanking intronic sequences. So our story started when we compile a data set of all human exons that are flanked by long intronic sequences, and we found a clear signal. Exons contain higher level of guanosine and citidine, called GC content, compared to the flanking intronic sequences. And we, and in the same time, Juan and Roderick Gridwell demonstrated that this differential GC content serve as a binding site for a mononucleosome sitting already in the DNA level, marking the location of exons, meaning higher level of nucleosome occupancy on exons compared to the flanking intronic sequences. And this is not a dismissible process because this is highly conserved among all multicellular organisms. So why nucleosomes need to mark the location of exons already in the DNA level? Because exons are under selection to maintain the same length as DNA that is wrapped around one nucleosome, which is 147 nucleotides. As a matter of fact, alternative exons maintain a shorter length, which is precisely the length of DNA that is protected by the core nucleosome, which is 127 nucleotides. So this led to the hypothesis that chromatin organization affect alternative splicing. And indeed, others and us demonstrated that by targeting chromatin organization, we can affect alternative splicing. And more than that, targeting the splicing machinery itself can affect chromatin organization, indicating that there is a crosstalk between chromatin organization and alternative splicing. So th this led us to believe that the distribution of the four nucleotides along the human genome has a great meaning for gene structure. So what do we know about the distribution of the four nucleotides in the human genome? So we have regions in the human genome, megabases long, containing thousands of genes, with very high GC content regions. And they don't have any unique characteristic. They don't have any gene ontology connecting them one to the other. And they are located alongside these blue regions, that contain very low GC content regions. Again, thousands of genes, no gene ontology connected one to the other, that are located in low GC content regions. The newcomers into the different genomes are the high GC content regions. They are restricted only to warm-blooded organisms, meaning avians and mammals. Outside of this species, we have only the situation of the low GC content regions. So during evolution, and we don't know precisely why, current the buzzword is timing of DNA replication. There is 
early DNA replication in the high GC content regions, and we, when you don't have supply or sufficient supply of the four nucleotides, there is mutation toward G and C. So this is most probably was the driving force for the appearance of the high GC content regions. But we decided to ask how, GC, how gene structure look like in the high and in the low GC content regions, the high in red and the low in blue GC content regions. So in the low GC content regions, we have long flanking intronic sequences with low GC content. Crossing the bridge between the intron and the exon, you can see elevation of the GC content. So in the exon, we have a bump. So higher level of GC content in the exon compared to the flanking intronic sequences. What about genes that are located in the high GC content regions? They have high GC content region in the intron and the exon as well, and no differential GC content between the intron and the exon, and the introns in these genes are very short. And we demonstrated that as long as you have this differential GC content, your splicing is safe, and most probably this group of genes are associated with intron definition because they are associated mostly with tissue-specific alternative splicing, whereas mutations in this group of genes are leading to exon skipping. And the separation into two groups of gene structure is restricted to warm-blooded organisms. Outside of this clade, we have one gene structure, short flanking intronic sequences, low GC content, and a differential GC content between the intron and the exon. So we reconstructed the ancestral structure, which pretty much look like what we can see in Fugo. Short flanking intronic sequences, low GC content, and a differential GC content. So during the appearance of warm-blooded organisms, there was separation into two different groups. In one group that remain in the low GC content regions, retro element invaded the flanking intronic sequences. We're going to hear about ALU in the next two talks, that lengthening the flanking intronic sequences, and as long as they have the differential GC content, their splicing is safe. The higher the differential GC content, more inclusion during alternative splicing. The lower the differential GC content, more skipping. Whereas in the other group, Mutations accumulated abolish the differential GC content. However, introns in this structure had to remain short. What about chromatin organization? Only when you have the differential GC content, you have a mononucleosome marking the location of the exon already in the DNA structure. But what about the genes that are located in the high GC content regions? They have more nucleosomes located on the DNA, but there is no one nucleosome located over the exon. So in one gene structure, there is a very specific chromatin organization. In the other one, we cannot distinguish between intron and exons just based on nucleosome occupancy. So this led us to suspect that there are other markers located already in the DNA level that can distinguish between introns and exons. And the most significant marker, epigenetic marker, that is responsible for nucleotide composition is DNA methylation. When you have the dinucleotide C following by G, there are three enzymes approaching the DNA and add a methyl group on the, citi on the citidine. This is called CPG methylation. And we know a lot about the function of CPG methylation in the promoter region. Much less is known about DNA methylation within the gene body itself. So we decided to examine DNA methylation in the low GC content region in green, and in the high GC content region in blue. In the low GC content regions, when you have the long flanking intronic sequences, 
80% of the CG site are methylated. Crossing the bridge between the intron and the exon, you can see elevation of 5%. So in this case, you have a mononucleosome marking the location of this exon, and also additional DNA methylation in the exonic sequence. What about DNA methylation in the high GC content regions where there is no nucleosomes marking their location? 65% of the intronic CG site are methylated. Getting close to the intron exon junction, there is a drop of 10%. Crossing the bridge between the intron and the exon, elevation of 15%. So here there is a much bigger differential GC content, most probably helping the splicing machinery pinpointing the location of this exon. The support for this hypothesis arrived when we analyze a specific site at the splice sites. When you have at the splice site dinucleotide of C and G, they are 100% methylated, indicating or suggesting that this 100% methylation, whenever you have this CG site, most probably assist the splicing machinery in identifying the splice sites for some exons, most probably not all of them. Okay, so we found that DNA methylation can distinguish between introns and exons, especially when you have very high GC content regions in which chromatin organization cannot explain the differential CPG, the, the differential discrimination between introns and exons. So currently I'm going to shift gear and to tell you about a neurodegenerative disease which is called familial dysautonomia or FD. FD is the only tissue specific alternative splicing disease. The mutation is at position 6 from C to T leading exon 20 to shift from constitutive to alternative splicing. So in the patient's in all tissues, we have a ratio of approximately 50-50%, except the neuronal systems in which the skipping is the predominant isoform, leading to the elimination, almost elimination, of this gene, which is called the ICAP gene. So we demonstrated that there are most probably two ways to tackle a therapy for this disease. One is to target the splicing, and there is a kinetin compound that can target the splicing directly. But there is another way is to elevate a little bit transcription level and to restore synthesis of this protein or to elevate synthesis of this protein. However, this is an orphan disease. There is not much money in the field. You cannot search for hundreds and thousands of different compounds. So we decided to search for compounds that will not require the FDA approval. And second, they, are, they have a known neuronal function. And such compound can be food supplements. Many of them, you can get into any drugstore and buy a food supplement, and they have a known function. Some of them have a known function or neuro neuronal activity. One of the examples is phosphatidylserine. Phosphatidylserine is located in membranes of neurons. It is involved in communicating between one neuron to the other. There is decline in the synthesis of phosphatidylserine in our body during our lifetime. So we are using it as a food supplement in people in the third generation. You can consume it in to a very high level, more than 1,000 milligram per day without any side effect and the FDA approved labeling of uh, phosphatidylserine as a compound that can prevent decline in long-term memory. So this is the uh, neuronal function. And indeed, when we gave phosphatidylserine to cells generated from FD patients, we've seen elevation in the transcription level without changing the ratio between exon inclusion to exon skipping, also elevation in the protein level. We generated a mouse model in which we replace exon 20 and the two flanking introns with the human uh, sequence with a point mutation and this mice showing tissue specific alternative splicing. 
we supplemented these mice with uh, phosphatidyl serine, extracted different organs, and demonstrated elev elevation in the transcription level and the protein level. More, more important than that, elevation in the brain, indicating that phosphatidyl serine managed to pass the blood-brain barrier and reaching the brain. And uh, at that point, a physician from NYU decided to start a small clinical trial, and he supplemented seven different FD patients with placebo, 300 milligram and 600 milligram of phosphatidyl serine per day, extracted RNA from the blood and examined by real-time PCR the level of the full-length mRNA, and you can see a dose-dependent level leading us to start a large clinical trial. So most probably a lot of basic science can lead to a good stuff eventually. So today I've demonstrated that the ancestral gene structure contains short flanking intronic sequences with low GC content and a differential GC content between the intron and the exon. During the appearance of warm-blooded organisms, there was separation into two gene structure. Long flanking intronic sequences with a differential GC content, short flanking intronic sequences with a high GC content and no differential GC content. This group of gene structure are mostly associated with tissue-specific alternative intron retention, indicating or applying for intron retention. Mutations in this group are leading mostly to exon skipping. The differential GC content can regulate alternative splicing, higher level, more exon skipping. Only when you have the differential GC content, there is a mononucleosome marking the location of this exon already in the DNA level. But for the other group, there is another marker, which is a differential DNA methylation between the intron and the exon. So this led us to suggest the speed bump model in which during transcription, when RNA polymerase II approaching a well-defined nucleosome, it's either had to slow down in order to allow the elongation complex to unwind the histones. Slowing down of Pol2 was shown before to uh, trigger the ability of the splicing machinery or most probably splicing factors that are associated with the CTD domain of Pol2 to move first to the three prime splice side and then to the five prime splice side, ignite the exon selection process, or most probably what we call exon definition, explaining why during evolution, introns can lengthening to thousands of nucleotides because the signal is located currently already in the chromatin organization. So who are the people that were involved in all these projects? The Nucleosome occupancy was done by Shragi Schwartz. The GC content story was done bioinformatically by Ido Kim, Amir Goren, Saar Galfman, and Dror uh, Hollander, Dror Hollander, and experimentally by Mariana Mit and uh, Galit Lev Maor and others. And the DNA methylation story was done by Saar Galfman. And the FD story, phosphatidyl serine, was found by Hadas Keren. And the FD mouse was generated by Ron. Uh, Ron uh, and there are many other stories in the lab, but I have to keep it for another meeting. And thank you all for your attention.